Hi, welcome to Main Street Macro. I'm Neela Richardson. Last week, we saw finally some good news on inflation. The year-over-year inflation numbers went from 9.1% to 8.5%. And while that cooling is welcome, it wasn't all good news. While Main Street saw lower prices at the pump, they saw much higher prices at the grocery store. And while one month of a decline is good news, it's really about putting consecutive months together of declines going from 8.5% to a much more tolerable 2%. So there's still a lot of work to do. Now, usually inflation fighting, as we all know, is the Fed's arena, but a new entrant has thrown its hat in the inflation fighting arena. And you know who that is? Congress in the form of the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. Here are three things you need to know about what the government can do to affect inflation. The first thing you need to know is that what inflation essentially is, is too many dollars chasing too few goods. Now, the Fed combats this problem by raising interest rates, which increases borrowing costs for Main Street and corporations, reduces demand, reduces spending, and reduces the number of those dollars chasing goods. The second thing you need to know is that the fiscal tool is generally conceived not interest rates, but taxes. Yes, I said it, the dreaded word, tax increases. By increasing tax rates, what happens is that there is less money for Main Street and corporations to spend. It does the same thing that interest rates do on the monetary side. It curves demand and therefore curves spending. Now, the third thing you need to know is that this new legislation is a different approach. Taxes is not the focus. It's actually new spending that is the focus of the new legislation. Specifically, what the bill does is increase investment in renewable energy to help with climate and tries to lower the acceleration of prescription drugs to help manage health care costs. Now, it's unlikely that new spending will actually help inflation in the short run. But the idea behind the legislation is that investing in future spending will help lower longer term costs. Now, the question before us all is, is this new duo of monetary and fiscal policy going to take any of the heat out of inflation now? Well, we'll see. It's going to take a few rounds of them actually working in tandem to even know. But what we do know is that when the federal government makes investments that makes the economy more productive, well, that leads to lower inflation in the future. Thanks for watching the Main Street Macro. For more information on this new legislation and the week ahead, please go to adpri.org.